Hi, my name is Elliot Prechter, and I'm the lead developer of eWaves, the world's most advanced Elliott Wave pattern recognition engine. Now you're here to see some live trading using eWaves, so let's get started. Okay, let's pop over to Elliott Wave International for a second. Elliott Wave International is a partner of Qualitative Analytics, and they have access to the institutional version of eWaves, and they use that for many different things across different services. And one of those, which I'm gonna show you today, are their Flash services. Now Flash services provides buy and sell recommendations for various markets. And in order to generate those recommendations, they use e-waves. As you can see here, we have many different recommendations out here on various ETFs and stocks. Let me pull up the uh, movement that we've seen since the start price on some of these relative to the direction that they're moving in. As you can see, some of the interesting ones here are TECS, which has moved quite a bit, about 16%. That's because we've seen a decline in technology, and this is an inverse fund relative to the technology sector. And so our Elliott Wave analysis indicated that a decline was coming. Now, I'm not going to actually show you the wave count for this particular one, We'll save that for people who are actually subscribed here. Um, but there is one very interesting position. This is kind of the next most, uh, next highest moving position here that I want to talk about, which is BEPC. So let me, let me get rid of that for a second, and let's actually pull down the wave count in this BEPC short position here and take a closer look at it. Okay, this was almost uh, two months ago that we put out this recommendation. As you can see, this chart is dated May 24th. So that's when the eWaves engine generated uh, this setup right here. Now, what you can see is we've got a wave one down, wave two up, okay, and then we're within a larger wave three. And within this wave three, we've just finished a one and a two. And as you can see, this two correction is very large compared to this two, even though this green two is of one degree higher. Okay, that's actually not that abnormal at all for third waves, especially if the third wave is going to be extended. So just by virtue of the fact that this is a large second wave relative to this second wave of one degree higher implies that we're expecting wave three to be an extended move. Now, that's not always the case. You can have large corrections and have a have a moderately sized wave three, but there is a tendency for there to be a correlation between the relative size of two within three and the size of three itself. Now, the first thing you'll probably notice in terms of an actual setup here is that we're looking for wave purple three to come off of here of green three. So it should be fairly aggressive move that's starting to develop here. Now, this flat correction here has just ended. So this is a little bit unusual in many of the other setups that I've shown you. I usually wait for some kind of confirmation. Maybe we want to break this 2-4 line here, you know, get, get, get a little bit of, of movement before acting on this. But we were aggressive here for a couple reasons. Now, the first reason I'm going to show you is that, as you know, wave 2 can never break wave 1. So if this market were to continue higher and break this green to right here at 3616, it would completely invalidate this wave count. And the market would be doing something else, and then e-waves would go to the next previously lower probability interpretation of this market. Okay, and that's why the initial recommended stop was 3616, which is right at this level here, just saying, okay, that's the invalidation point, okay? So because that's very close to the entry here, that's one reason we said, okay, we can go ahead and be a little more aggressive with this because we have such a, a small distance here until this count is invalidated. We don't have to wait for that break um, because, of course, waiting for the break will increase that distance further. So there's, there's a risk to either way that you look at this. So let's dive into why precisely, uh, from a technical point of view, we were so confident that the high was in at this particular moment in time in spite of the fact that, again, we did not get any follow-through yet, we were very much picking a top, which Wall Street says never to do. Well, you're about to learn something cool about flats here. You know, everybody knows that zigzags and double zigzags tend to have channels, which are a pair of parallel lines, okay, that the market definitely knows exists. Now, what you usually do for 
a zigzag is you take the baseline, which is the beginning of the correction, and you run a line from that through B, and that ends up being parallel to A and C. But as you can see, you cannot do that with a, with a flat, because in a flat, B makes a new low, so this line would be downsloping, and C makes a new high, so this is upsloping. So you have diverging lines. You do not have a channel here. Okay, the secret I'm about to tell you is that flats actually do form channels. And the E-Waves engine knows about them, and it can use that to help determine when this wave C is going to be put into place. Okay, so to, to show that, I'm going to pop into GIMP here, which is my image editor. For those of you who use Linux like I do, you'd be familiar with GIMP. I already drew this line here, this AC line. Okay, and as you can see, by connecting the ends of A and the ends of C and extending this line backwards, Lo and behold, the market seems to know this line exists. It has bounced off of it and had used it as support here and then as resistance here in multiple different places. And here's the secret line that no one else knows about in the Elliott Wave community, um, which is the parallel line to the AC line in a flat. Okay, now the way the E-Waves engine detects this is fairly sophisticated. It's looking for these kind of touch points along here. It never looks for it at the B point, okay? It expects B to make a new low. Even in running flats, B does almost never forms that parallel line. But some of the common touch points are this wave A here, some of the subcomponents of B, as you can see going on here. Wave 1 tends to hit it. Um, so there's a lot of different touch points that the engine can look at to try to figure out, okay, is th there's a bottom line here that's forming, and if that line ends up being highly parallel with AC, okay, such that these are our right angles here. If you remember that from uh, high school high school geometry. Um, another way of stating this, if my inner nerd comes out for a second, that the, the dot product of these two guys is uh, very close to, to one if you treat these as vectors. So you're basically saying, okay, these are, these are pointing in the same direction. They're the same vector right here. Um, then it's going to say, okay, well, then we know we have a high likeliness that wave C is done, okay? Because obviously, if, if we were trying to put the high of C, even if it was above A, but we were trying to put it, you know, here or something like that or here or anywhere here, it wouldn't be up near that upper line like, like it is right now. So this, this little secret channel here is what gave us that extra confidence with wave C. And then if we pop into E-Waves Live here in a second, we can take a look at uh, what's happened since then. Okay, so let's click over back to the browser. And like I said, this is the original setup. And then if we go into eWaves Live, then we can check on the updated wave count. So let's click search markets. Let's do BEPC. And there it pops up right here, Brookfield Renewables. So this is the US version of NYSC. There's a, looks like there's a version of BEPC trading on the Toronto Stock Exchange in Canada. So that's probably priced in Canadian dollars. So let, let's obviously go with the US one here. And as you can see, the flat here is the one we were just looking at, um, but the market has moved since then. So my guess is you can't see at this zoom level, but this is probably gonna be a one, two, one. So work in some kind of a, a third wave here to the downside. Let's go ahead and click the zoom button to zoom in. Okay, and you can actually see this C of the flat here, one, two, three, four, five, very aggressive, powerful move up. These C waves are always kind of kind of hilarious from a from a point of view of traders in the market because everyone thinks when the C wave makes a new high above A that it's the start of a new trend. But us elite waivers know that actually no, this is a corrective move here, and the trend is is actually still down, which started quite a long time ago back in, in January. Um, but yeah, let's let's zoom in here, and there we've got one, two, okay, working three, and within that three, we've got a smaller one, two. Now, of course, the wave count could be incorrect, and at any point, the market could actually reverse and go the other way. As uh, anyone who's been around the markets long enough knows, you always have to be aware for that, and aware that there are probably alternative counts uh, and alternative ways of labeling this structure. So I think it's probably about time to move the stop a little closer. This too would be a very nice level here. If you're being conservative, if you're being a little more aggressive with your stop, it would be this too. But I tend to like twos as places to put stops um, because if this were to be taken out on the upside here, 
I don't really see any way of counting, continuing to count an impulse wave down. So you could probably put your stop at this level. And the nice thing about that is then this ensures with 100% certainty that this is now a positive recommendation. And that is one of the benefits of putting the recommendation out right at this exact high here is that it's easy if you catch that point uh, to lock in a positive recommendation just by putting a stop. It's still a little bit lower here. So, so that's very nice. So this was just very interesting to me. Um, this, this stuff with trend lines for flats is kind of a new feature that uh, I did a lot of research on a, a few months back and we got into the engine. Um, of course, that's just one aspect that E-Waves uses to figure out where to put the labels. It, it amalgamates hundreds of different tiny little things like that that goes into producing the wave counts using statistics from a massive database of historical Elliott wave patterns. So um, there's a lot more going on. But, you know, that's all I really wanted to talk about today was just that trend line thing because I think it's something new that you might have learned something from. Um, so let me know down in the comments if if you've used this before, um, if you're one of the people who've, who've already noticed that there, there are these flat channels, or if you weren't aware of that and this is, this is something new. That would be very interesting, uh, interesting to know. So, you know, before I wrap up, though, I just wanted to show a quick announcement We've been working very hard on making E-Waves more accessible and available. And we do have a version for U.S. individual investors. And we actually just launched Australia individual investors as well. That's in our new section here. And if you go to the E-Waves Live page here and check it out, our product page, um, you'll see details on exactly which markets we cover for Australia and for the U.S. And we're getting very close to launching India. So stay tuned for an announcement on India. So with that, uh, that's all for today. And I look forward to talking with you guys again soon and doing some more exciting live trading with E-Waves. <laughs>